God fearing anointed Jamie Williams. Father, we come before you this day asking that you bless and sanctify this holy word, that you will be exalted and uplifted, and everything that will be said will be in you and for you. Lord, I ask you to decrease me, and you come and increase in me, that this word will go forth, that somebody might want to be saved and think about how you died on the cross for us. Lord, I just thank you for this day. This is a day that you had ordained for this word to go forth. And Lord, I know that the Holy Spirit is here and is my comforter. Right now, I bind every demon that's coming around about, because I have no fear. And I know that I can give you the glory and I can give you praise in all things. And these things I ask in your name. Amen. The text that I'll be taking up today is called A Call into Holiness. Coming out of 1 Peter in the first chapter, and I would like to read up, I'm going to start from the third verse just so you can get a scenario about what I'm getting ready to speak about. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his Abundant mercy have, wait a minute, big one, excuse me, have begotten in again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye are greatly rejoiced, though now for a season, if I need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen ye love, whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently with prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in then, did signify when it testified beforehand the sacrifices of Jesus Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto as they did minister the things which they are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven with things the angels desire to to look unto. Wherefore, gird up thy loins of your mind, be sober, and being to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, as obedient children, not mm, fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with 
corruptible things, it's always, I can't see, silver and gold, and your vain conversations received from traditions from your fathers. Amen. 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 That's powerful. Yes, it it's very powerful. I like to think about it because, you know, Jesus paid, a per, he paid the price for us. He died up on Calvary, and nobody could do it but him. And, you know, we should be glad that he died for us because we couldn't save ourselves, but he saved us through the power of his blood. And he is omnipotent. He is the great I am. He is he, the man that brought salvation to the world. Why wouldn't you want to be holy? There's a lot of reasons why we should be holy. You know, it's not a hard thing. Sometimes people say it's so whole, it's, it's hard to be holy. But it's not. It's a lot easier than what you think it is. It's the devil who wants you to think to make you think it's, it's hard. You can do anything you want to do if you put your mind to it. It's just like if you go to a job, you go do the job, you're going to do everything that the boss asks you to do, and you're going to do it to the best of your ability, and sometimes even better than that. So why can't you do that for Jesus Christ? This man hung on the cross. You think about how they pierced him in his side and how they put the crown of thorns on his head and the blood came streaming down. How they whipped him with the whip, with the cats, with on, and the blood came streaming down his back. Why can't he be holy? God is just that good to us. He woke us up this morning. God is really good. I can't tell you just how good he's been to me, but I'm telling you, he's really, really good. Now, I'm going to take you back into some notes that I have here about holiness. Holiness to the Lord. And this is coming out of Exodus, the 28th chapter, 26 verse. And they shall offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for atonement. And they shall cleanse the altar when thou hast made an atonement for it. And thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it. Don't you know we're blessed today? We don't have to go out and kill no bullocks and place it on the altar. Jesus is the atonement. He's broken down the veil. We can go straight to Jesus. He is our intercessor. And when you don't have to go through nothing else to know that you can go to Jesus, that's a good thing. Because Jesus is the intercessor between us and the Father. Lord have mercy. Now, how do we protect, perfect Holiness, I found that in Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, first verse. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now, God is the only one right now who is perfect, but that don't mean we can't strive to be perfect. You know, this is our dressing room. One day, Jesus is coming back to get us, and the only way he's coming back to get us, he's coming to get those who are pure, holy in spirit, those who love the Lord. He is not coming back with no filth. He's coming back for a spot, people without spot or wrinkle. God is, he's good, and he is good. Lord have mercy. He has no spot, no blemish. We should be able to want to live without a spot or a blemish. When you're in your house, you want to clean up. You don't want nothing to be shown, no spots on your glasses. You don't want no spots on your glass table. You don't want no marks on your floor. You clean your house. So if you can clean your house, what's wrong with you cleaning yourself up? Lord, you have to clean yourself up. Lord, don't you know your body is a temple of God? You got to be careful what you put inside your body. You know, you might want to get out there and smoke. You might want to get out there and drink. You might want to get out and do a whole lot of things that's unholy. But don't you know, this is a temple, and when you abuse the temple of God in your body, you're also abusing God, and you're abusing Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross for us, with that blood comes streaming down. As becoming holiness, this is 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. For God has not called us into uncleanliness, but unto holiness. That is also scripture. I'm glad I know the word, and I'm glad that God cleaned me up. I'm glad I got saved. I got baptized in 1969, in August. I was nine years old. But I thank God for what he's done for me, and I thank God that he's still using me. And he can use anybody. He made a donkey talk. But the thing is, you got to be able to put yourself in a position to be used by God. If you're not here and you're not in the position, then God can't use you. He wants somebody he can trust. You know, you go and you call on Lord, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Thank God for grace and thank God for mercy. Because grace is walking beside you on one side and mercy on the other. Yeah. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. Yeah. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Yeah. 
Why did he do it? Because he didn't, he could have got down at the cross any time he wanted to. But he knew that he had to do it for us. You know, God he said, Supper. God suffered for us. Just like God said, Supper little children to come unto me, forbid them not. Same thing with us adults. He, he died for our sufferings and he suffered for us. Why can't we lay down something and suffer for him? Lord have mercy. Woo. Question is why? So many things this is happening around here. We see things going on. The world is going crazy. The wars is going on here. The earthquakes is going. The tsunamis is gone. Earthquakes as far as the tornadoes, everything. On all ends of the world. And what do they say about that? When you see these things, look for the sign of the, the sign of the coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming, saints. He's already on the way. We have to be ready for him. Even here in the house of God, we have to be the examples, first of all, before we can go out the world. Out there, don't you know people are really looking at you? They're looking at people here inside the congregation. You know, when we come to church, the devil come to church too. The devil's not just outside. The devil could be anywhere. But you know what? We got to rebuke that devil. And tell him, get, him, get away. Because I don't want no place. He has no place here in this congregation, in this church, or me, the pastor, or any ministerial stuff if he's been here. God, I tell you, mm, why won't you serve a God like that? Only God can do things for you that he can do. I can give you many testimonies. One third testimony I can tell you, I was diagnosed a couple years back. They told me I had muscular sclerosis. I was torn up on the floor because I had a cousin who passed from muscular sclerosis. And when they told me, that devil told me, say, now, nah, what you going to do now? You know your time is very short. And, you know, I was very saddened. But my sister came to me and my family came down and they spoke to me. She said, you know what? All sicknesses is not unto death. And when she told me that, you know, I grabbed a hold of that, and I went on down there and started doing what I had to do for the Lord. I started going to see my neurologist. I was taking three shots a day, and I bathed the Saran. But you know what? I had to stretch out on faith. I said, God, you blessed me this far. You're my creator, and if it's your will, then I will be healed. And you know what? One day, I just stopped taking the shots. Doctors didn't know I would stop taking the shot. I just took a chance and stepped out on faith. Until this day, I have never taken another shot. My muscle tuberculosis is healed. But you know what? He thought that wasn't enough. So that was said, you know what? Okay, since you start healing the muscle tuberculosis, I'm going to come at you another way. So then, turn around, a couple years later, I kept going into the hospital. They kept giving me, having little TIA strokes. That's what they say, mini strokes. But one day, I had went out, and I was witnessing all day long up in Virginia Beach where I live. And I wasn't tired. Then I came home, ate a little bit, and then I told myself, I said, you know what? I'm just going to take a little nap and rest a while. Little did I know, when I woke up, I got up to go to the restroom, couldn't even stand on my feet. I, anyway, it came down and I had uh, uh, what they call a hemoglobin stroke, the bleeding of the brain. But I thank God I got a God-fearing husband, and I thank God that he was there at the time. And he said to me, he said, you know what? We're going to get you to the hospital. And that's me being all the time in the hospital and around hospitals. I was sick and tired of being in hospitals. And I told him, no, you're not. You ain't going to take me to no hospital. He said, oh, yes, you're going. We're going. But thank God for the obedience of being obedient to him. Because if I wouldn't have went to the hospital when he took me there, Jamie wouldn't be standing here today. Or sitting here. But you know what? I thank God for that. And nothing thing with that, they didn't have to give me no kind of surgery to reduce that blood. I was in a critical care unit. And when I stayed in that critical care, blood was just oozing and bleeding in my brain. My brain was just swelling. So usually everybody who was on that floor in intensive care, they had the same kind of stroke I had. They had to put, take the pressure off the brain by drilling. But they didn't have to drill in my head. Because I sat there and I prayed and prayed and I prayed and I cried and I prayed. And when I sat there and when I was there after I did that, the Lord blessed me where I didn't lose any of my faculties. I could talk. I could move my arms. I could do everything. Then I got a grasp of the word again. And I remember what God promised me. I can do all things for Christ who strengthens me. In him I live, move, and have my being. And when you know you got God on your side and you live into holiness, God has many promises for us. And all you got to do is latch on to one of them and hold on and get a grip. Even if you got to smack yourself back and forth.